Christine here from popculturemadness.com. I am backstage at the TLA with Architects UK. Thank you guys so much for joining me. How are you enjoying the tour with uh, Anger Shikari so far? Yeah, it's been, it's been great actually. Two days in now. Uh, this will be the third show, but so far, uh, that's the math. Yeah, we've, we've uh, <laughs> so far it's been it's been great actually. So far it's been one of the been going down really well, which is pretty rare and for us in America. So. You know, can't complain so far. Why is that a rare thing for American touring? I just don't. I don't think American people are, they don't really like our band so far. I guess, but now it like seems the, they don't like the music. No, music. no, but so but the last two days seem to have uh, we fucked off for ages and people forgot how terrible we are mm. and now they think oh maybe we'll go, we'll go see them and maybe they'll be all right. I, and we seem to be being all right. So and it's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Daybreakers is an absolutely amazing album, so hopefully everyone has had a chance to check it out. You guys are going to be doing Warp Tour all summer too, right? What are your expectations for that? I know it's like boot camp for bands sometimes. Yeah, we. I mean, I think we just keep our expectations yeah. at zero for everything, you know, because uh, you you know don't want to do something and think that you, you somehow uh, are owed a reaction from the crowd or something like that. So, I think the the good thing as well, if, if if you keep your expectations so low, you're always happy with what you get as well. You know, <laughs> like we we don't deserve crazy reactions out here. So you know, when when they do happen, it's really you know it's great for us. So, I mean, you guys have definitely been true road warriors. I mean, you've done global tours, you've headlined in the UK, obviously, you've done some of the major festivals in Europe. How do the European festivals differ than the American festival circuit? Well, we've only really done Bamboozle out here, um, and obviously we're doing Warp this summer, but I mean, the Euro Fests are always always really fun, you know, there's always bands that you know on there that you're friends with, and they're a good day, and you just drink all day and have fun, and there's always good food around. Um, we, did a, we did a run last year of just doing European festivals, which was great. It was two years ago, actually, yeah. A couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can do some more this year as well. So, you know, being that you guys have been together since it was 2006, right, when you're first... Oh, okay, so was your first album out in 2006? Is that when Nightmares was, or...? Yeah, maybe that was when that was. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, how do you feel about the evolution of the band to this point? How, in which ways do you think you guys have grown as musicians? Um... No, that's good. That's good. Um, I feel pretty weird about the evolution at points, but mm. then good about it at others. You know, some when it's like you don't get a chance to learn, and other bands have definitely done it better, where they just seem to take great strides all the time and they get better and better. I don't think it's been that straightforward for us. No. But, uh, uh, but you know, you only get one chance to do it, and you learn as you go, and. Uh, you can't regret it because you just have to yeah. take it as it is. I think the evolution of the band is... I mean, I I, I personally, I don't, I'm probably speaking for not behalf of the whole you band... You can only but, speak for yourself, mate. But I'm I'm having more fun now than I think I uh, ever have done in the in the band. And, I, you know, I feel like we're all... We all want the same things. We're all... Everyone that's, that's with us on tour, everyone that we take anywhere with us, we're all such good friends now. We're such a tight unit that... Um, that is just going away and being on tour is so fun and writing music is more fun probably now than it ever has been for us and you know we're just we're just excited about what we've got coming up he listened yeah he listened <laughs> so for each one of you do you have a pivotal music moment that occurred in your life that made you decide that you wanted to pursue it for a career you know did you see any really standout live shows when you were younger or anything like that um I don't think I, I, starting a band was just like, I don't know. It just felt really natural for me. It was yeah. something like you were like, I, I want to do this. Like it was, we've obviously all been listening to music since we were young. And uh, we obviously all were listening to pretty similar bands, you know? I don't ever remember going to shows and thinking, oh, well, I'd like to do that though. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't, I don't think I ever started uh, playing music thinking that I would ever then ever be like a musician. Yeah. It was just playing music it wasn't just something fun music to, to do to was it yeah. it was just playing getting together and playing with friends sort of thing obviously it's changed now and um 
but yeah, I, I don't know. Like we, I used to go and see I don't know, bands like Muse and stuff when I was younger, and that I loved it. But yeah, I don't know what it was. I just, I, I just knew I wanted to play an instrument. That's all. I think for me, I was never really, like, never really good at anything else really at school other than music. It was all I really ever really cared about. So it was kind of like if I'm gonna get anywhere in this world, I'm gonna just have to not even try and do anything slightly intelligent. I'm just gonna play drums or sing, and somehow it seems to have worked out. And you know, you kind of meant you're not gonna do anything that involves intelligence. Yeah, but exactly. it proved your point. <laughs> yeah, it, your inability to articulate that did prove your point in a roundabout way. Exactly. Whereas you know everyone else in the band did pretty well and. We're all in the same place. I gave up a career in all sorts of, you know... <laughs> you were going to work for NASA, wasn't it? I think it was going to be an astronaut. Like, yeah. It was going to be an astronaut, but then I thought... No. Making shitloads out of computers. Yeah, so... So, so I play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I always have the goal to be the first band to play on the moon. That's always... I think, I think Muse will probably get there. Right? Yeah, I think Muse will get there first. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> so do you recall the first album that you purchased with your own money? Um, yeah... I think it was probably something really bad. With my own money, it would probably be Nirvana. I reckon it was, I think it was probably Nevermind. That was the first record I ever really, really loved. Yeah. That was my, my dad had uh, that, and he introduced me to that. And then my dad bought Foo Fighters records, and I think that was a lot of the first Solid. stuff I liked. But I think the first thing I bought might have been Dookie by Green Day. That's pretty punk rock as well. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm fucking punk. You yeah, know. yeah, no. You don't even no, man. know how punk I am. <laughs> no sound checks, fucking we're punk rock, man. So, so you guys have a music video for Alpha and Omega, or Alpha Omega. Yeah. I think I'm adding a word in there. But <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about the concept behind the video? I thought it looked pretty badass. <laughs> Not really. Uh, <laughs> uh, to be honest, I mean... Uh, I'm not going to say that we don't know what the concept of the video is, but we work closely with our friend Stuart Birchill, who does uh, our music videos, and uh, we kind of spoke to him a lot about the the lyrics in the video, and he kind of then ran with that with his own sort of artistic license or whatever. And uh, I, I think if I tried to explain exactly what it all meant, I probably wouldn't do it justice, and I'd just make an idiot yeah. of myself. Um, but I, obviously, I mean, the song's kind of uh, about being atheist. So it, it's, you know, along those lines. Um, but I suppose he's taken it and run with sort of uh, the, I don't know, maybe the celebrity side of religion and, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I, I can't articulate it anyway. <laughs> I think it's open for interpretation. Yeah, I think it's. I, I like that about it. Like it's definitely my favorite uh, music video that we have because it's got kind of a, a cinematic feel and um, people take different things away from it. And I like that about it. And it's cool going on YouTube, or whatever, and seeing people talk about it and trying to. I mean, some people just go Voldemort. Voldemort. Um, <laughs> and other people have a conversation about it. I don't mind if people just want to go. Well, that's just that's, if we that's just that's clear. Does look a bit like Voldemort. Voldemort. Looks a bit like Voldemort, yeah, but Voldemort yeah. had um, <laughs> eyes, didn't he? Voldemort had eyes, and the guy yeah, in the video yeah, doesn't true. have eyes. Oh, so. Voldemort's a fucking lizard. Exactly, man. fucking a fucking lizard. Maybe like first glance, and then you're like, oh wait, no. Not not maybe quite. if your glasses on and you're like struggling I to think focus, we maybe. Got sued to shit if we had decided <laughs> to put Voldemort hell. in one of our videos. Yeah. I mean, I Who's out of doubt? He's struggling to find work now. Ray Fiennes was busy anyway. Yeah, so. exactly. exactly. I don't think J.K. Rowling likes to share too much on those characters. No, she's she's very rich now. <laughs> so you know, can we talk a little bit about the theme behind Daybreakers? Is there you know kind of a cohesive theme that you would say runs through the album? I know I was reading a little bit about it being like a you know almost like a global consciousness of, of everyone coming together. Can you guys expand on that a little bit? Yeah. I don't think it... Uh, unfortunately, there isn't really any single theme. Uh, I think that every time I get asked that question, I feel like I'm going to stumble over my words because there there isn't one single idea. I suppose that there's uh, the record on, on whole sort of kind of about 
being open to alternative ideas and not and maybe not believing everything that you, the mainstream media feeds to us all the time. Um, and I suppose all the frustrations as well in kind of op opening opening your eyes and seeing kind of whatever you want to call it, like injustice or whatever. And, and when you kind of start to put together the pieces of the puzzle and understand how the world works and how the world is run, kind of make you uh, feel a lot of things, feel angry or feel frustrated or whatever. I think a lot of it's got sort of venting that, you know. Mm. I, I th and, you know, just talk about the lyrics, it was obviously the first time really that everything that we'd had before was quite personal, more sort of, you know, stuff that I was going through or, you know, it was nice on this record to kind of open up to the bigger picture and be able to sing and maybe even to play these songs with a bit more commit, like conviction, I guess, because everybody in the band... Because they'll be relevant yeah, forever. Exactly. You know, if you sing a song about breaking up with a girlfriend or something like that, then, then maybe that might be cathartic for you. For yeah, you're right, you're on, yeah, you're only you're only going to feel it for like a year or so until you're over it, whereas And then you get a new stuff, girlfriend, you don't give a fuck about the old no. one. So, I mean, the song's no longer... Exactly, yeah. That's but, the thing, these poor guys are forced to sing these same songs over and over again. <laughs> yeah. At least, you know, I think, the, again, the thing with screaming and shouting is you, you have to have some sort of conviction behind your voice to kind of really... Uh, get the actual emotion out there, you know, and if you're actually going on stage and singing about stuff that is relevant to you every night, you're going to give it the best you can. Absolutely, and I'm sure, you know, it can definitely open the eyes and minds of the listeners as well who maybe hadn't taken the time to think about any of those issues before. We've had kids come up to us and, and say, you know, like, oh, through you guys, you know, you've opened my eyes up to the Venus Project or, you know, sit through seeing you guys, I've I've been donating money to... Sea Shepherd, or you know, and that's the kind of stuff where you're like, oh wow, we're actually, we are actually reaching out to people and kind of making a as small difference or as small as we can, you know. Or they say your musicians, not politicians. Shut the fuck shut the up. fuck up. Yeah, please, which please is, shut up. Stop telling is, me what to do with my life. Which is just as rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned a lot about what mainstream media can try and feed to people and everything. I mean, I may be talking against some of my peers, but, you know, being that we're a pop culture site, we kind of look at the positives and negatives. And, you know, what I hate so much is when, you know, they try and box artists in to be one thing or another when I think that music can be completely universal. You know, it's something that everyone can take a, a different message away. You know, is there anything in particular that you hope your music will say to listeners, or is it more just to kind of open their minds to things? Yeah, well, I, I personally think it, if we can bring up subjects which, which make people have debates, which instead of people have discussions about it, or op you know, open their minds up to stuff, instead of just like, oh, this dude's singing about like a dragon, like destroying a castle, and then there was blood and guts, instead of someone being like, oh, they're singing about this, and there's someone go, well, I think this about the subject they're talking about. You know, opening debates and conversations and actually bringing up questions within the music is quite a cool thing. I think, I think people, um, especially young people, are afraid to talk about a lot of things, yeah. even if they know these things are going on because they're afraid they might say something wrong and sound stupid because politics is complicated or whatever, um, when it really isn't, you no. know. And... Um, I think people are afraid to to say anything because there's this perception that like it, it's you're self righteous or um, you know you or arrogant or above someone because you're if you if you talk about a lifestyle whatever that lifestyle is and you say say all of us we all have iPhones or something or whatever and uh, you know we're guilty of that I I, I have a, a Apple products or whatever. Um, and I, if I talk about the problems, the ethical problems in the manufacture of those products, or whatever, then people say there. A lot of people's reaction is sort of, you know, shut up, you're a prick, or you use it, or whatever. But I mean, some people don't even know it, so let's at least talk about it. And I think just not being afraid to talk about things, you know, because you're afraid you're going to get caught out, or someone's going to go, ah, but you, you still drive a car, so you yeah. can't talk, you can't say that this oil giant shouldn't go to the Antarctic and drill for oil. Well, why shouldn't I be able to say that? Because I get in a van and go in it. I can be unhappy with the way the world operates and 
because I'm forced to be part of it, really. Yeah. I mean, there are alternatives, for example, but we're not going to get that until we all talk about it. Mm. But I think a lot of people are afraid to talk about it because they're going to get ridiculed or whatever. So, uh, I, th I think I completely agree with what Tom's saying. I think, it's, I think it is important to, to have these discussions and I think it is important to kind of, you know, whether someone feels like that or not, you have to start somewhere. In the, the, exactly. Even, it's even like the a smallest learning thing process, you can do. isn't it? Yeah. That you, you go on, you don't, a, a flip doesn't switch and like your beliefs change and your lifestyle changes to exactly match it. It's a learning process, you know, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can make a bigger difference than we are right now. Mm. But right now, we're still learning. So, and, uh, yeah, I think that's a big thing for me that people are afraid to talk about things because they're going to be seen as like an idiot, you know. I, I mean, I've had it before where I've talked about, uh, you know, the the obsession with like iPhones and everyone buys a new phone every six months and then uh, uh, however million units go on a landfill somewhere. Um, I, I mentioned that in front of one of my friends uh, maybe a couple of years ago and he, he, said, he said, you don't care about that stuff. Uh, just that, that kind of sums it up for me that like, people are kind of like, what we, it's like this choice to like, you either don't, like you choose this life of, I don't give a shit about anything, I'm going to do whatever I want or, or live in the woods and live off the land. I mean, you've got to find a middle ground and if we're going to get any discussion, we can't all run off and, you know, we need to talk about it. But... I don't know. Yeah, it's a frustrating thing, I think, when you're not allowed to discuss anything without, you know, it's not black and white. You have to, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain. Anyway. Well, you know, the world is filled with shades of grey, and it's, you know, one of those things where I think that, you know, it's hard for people to adapt sometimes, but, you know, just because we're concerned about something doesn't mean we stop living our lives, too. I mean, I think that you can be concerned about something and own an iPhone too. <laughs> like, you know, for instance, I don't think it makes you any less of a person. It's just, it's, it's sometimes difficult to match up your beliefs to your lifestyle when this is the lifestyle that we're given. You know, that you're, you're put into whatever, like a, a capitalist society. And, and unless you want to live on the street, you've got to play the game to an extent, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I think that the game is good and that it's beneficial for all of us and it's not going to destroy the planet, you know, but you, you kind of have to, to an extent. I mean, you do the little bits where you can, but, um, yeah, and that's all part of working it out, you know, and, and kind of learning, I suppose. Yeah. Absolutely. So, other than Warp Tour coming up, you know, when you're done with this rung of tour dates, what is next on the horizon, you know, if even into the fall? Do you guys have that planned out so far, or...? Um, we might come back for a th another U.S. run um, at the end of the year, but um, also we're going to go and uh, do another record, probably, because that's what we're supposed to do, I think. That's what you do in a band, isn't it? You write records and you tour it, that's um, it. How quick is the process for you, usually? It takes yeah, about a year, it takes about a year yeah. And it takes then, about a year and countless demos and, and then edited demos and then more demos. I would give some spiel about how we want this one to be the best one ever, but it's just pointless, it's because that's be what everyone feels it's before they be get It's going to be the record. heaviest, with the most melodic, with the most energy, with the most meaning. It's really it's the, finally architects. It's, it's pointless, yeah. talking about that stuff, because everyone feels that. And I look back at all our other records, and I think, yeah, I can do so much better this time, but I know I'll think that about this one when I come to do the next one. So. so do you guys have a lot of stuff on the shelf or do you guys ever revisit anything? Was it hard to kind of wiggle down what was going to make the final cut? I mean, Tom, Tom is always always writing and is always busy and, you know, we'll get emails every week with, you know, like three new demos in it, you know, and we're, you know, this time... This record is really important to us. This next one, as it is, as is every record. Yeah, you know? I can't remember yeah. one that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's important. So you know, you always try and make the, the best record you can, and you know, every now and there's always that time where you have a demo, and then four weeks later, you kind of go, you know what, we haven't actually fully recorded that yet, so maybe we could change it here. And yeah, you know, we're kind of in that stage now. We're we're so, whittling it down. I'm starting to get to the point now where. I'm get, starting to get songs where I think, yeah, this this could go on a record now. So um, I'm really excited to to go and do another record. But I always am. So until I'm actually doing it, and then it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs>
So how active are you guys on social media? I'm sure you've witnessed this uprise of, you know, the way people learn about new bands and share music and all that. You mean the uprise of this? Yeah. yeah pretty much. We're all on, we're all on there. I, you know, and I think so, social media can be, can be huh? used as a... Exactly. <laughs> I think social media can be used as a, as a very powerful tool. Brainwashing tool. Yeah. It can be used for good and evil. Like, the internet is full of so much amazing stuff and it's also full of so much shit as well, you know? I'll get in trouble for saying it's brainwashing tool yeah. right now because no, people go, right. "Oh, you're on Twitter. Yeah, exactly, I fucking know yeah. I am. I'm fucking brainwashed." <laughs> but say I wasn't. There's, if it wasn't for the internet and for some social media sites, you wouldn't be able to learn about the the interesting things that that do go on in the world. You know, it's not like there's a a newspaper that goes out that that is, you know, a little secret one that goes in your door and goes, "You know what? This is actually the shit that's going on in the world." But they're not putting this on the front page of the newspaper or BBC News or whatever. You know, with, without the internet, there would be certain stuff that. We, that some of us wouldn't be able to find out about, so you know, is is a it can be great. But there is also shit that where people take pictures of themselves all day and put that online. If and you sift between yeah. all the stuff about what people had for breakfast and yeah. what and what coffee they got today, there's some pretty valuable yeah. information to be shared. So. Somewhere though, someone thought it was more important to put a picture up of what they have for dinner and then maybe have a picture of them taking it than it was to kind of go, you know what? If we started doing this, we could probably. Yeah, Between so that and, and cat memes. Yeah, cat cats memes. and <laughs> dogs and shit. Don't get me wrong, I will like looking at a cat and dog every now and then, but just not all the time. <laughs> I hear you. So what is the best way for us to keep up to date with everything going on with you? I'm sure the website and yeah. all that. Ar Architects Twitter and Architects Fate. We're pretty busy on Facebook, so it's probably the best way. We should, to get, a, we should get a website, shouldn't we? But no, we have, we have architectsofficial.com, which has our dates on it, but, you know... People don't really go on it, do no, they? No, don't. I think the, the sort of website. Things. Long gone in the days of pure volume and, you know. Hardcore MP3. It's yeah. Sad. It is sad. It is it sad. Is sad. <laughs> Great. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes out to speak with me. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we will catch you again on Warp Tour. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.